Hi boys and girls and welcome to Ephesus Kids Corner. Let's review our Sabbath school lessons that we studied this week. Come along! Good morning boys and girls and welcome to the kindergarten lesson review for lesson four. I was blind but now I see. When something wonderful happens to you, who do you tell about it? Well, long, long time ago, there was a man who was blind and something wonderful happened to him. Can you guess who he told about it? Let's find out. Jesus was walking along the road and he saw a man sitting on the side of the road. This man had been born blind. He could not see. He was sitting at the side of the road begging for money. Jesus didn't have any money to give him, but he had something better. So Jesus went to the man. He spit in the dirt, mixed it around, and made mud. Then he took that mud and placed it on the man's eyes. Then he said to the man, Go to the pool of Shalom and wash your eyes. So the man listened. He got up, he went to the pool of Shalom, and he started washing off the mud from his eyes. And then, to his surprise, something amazing happened. Can you guess what happened? Yes, he could see. After rinsing off all that mud from his eyes, he was now able to see. He was so happy that he started to tell everyone. He told his parents, his neighbors, and everyone in his community. When the neighbors heard, they couldn't believe it. They said to themselves, Is this the man who once was blind but now he can see? No, no, it can't be. It must be someone else. But it actually was him. He was born blind, but Jesus healed him and gave him sight. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the Jewish leaders heard about what had happened, and they were not happy. They wanted to make trouble. Oh, no. You see, they didn't like Jesus, and so they were trying to stir up trouble. So they sent for the man's parents. And when the man's parents came, they asked the parents, Is this really your son? Was he really born blind? And now he was healed? Healed by Jesus? And the parents were so afraid of the Jewish leaders that they didn't want to answer. So they said to the Jewish leaders, Here's our son. He's grown. He's a big man. He can tell you. So the man told the Jewish leaders that indeed he was born blind, but Jesus healed him and gave him his sight, and now he could see. The Jewish leaders were so angry because they didn't want anyone learning about this, and so they chased him out of the synagogue. Oh, so sad, boys and girls. But Jesus heard all about what was happening and he went to the man and he said to the man, do you believe in the son of man? The man that was once blind said, who's the son of man? Then Jesus replied, I am the son of man. I am the one that healed you. The the man that was once blind, he knelt down and he started praising God. He said, Lord, I believe in the Son of Man. From that day on, the blind man went throughout his community telling everyone he met about the wonderful thing that Jesus had done for him. He was blind, but now he could see. So, boys and girls, the message of this story is, we serve God when we tell others what Jesus has done for us. 
our memory verse is one thing I do know. I was playing, I know I see. John 9 verse 25. Good morning, boys and girls. Our lesson for today is home at last. Our memory verse is God has been gracious to me and I have all I need. Genesis 33 verse 11. Jacob was returning to his homeland as God had instructed him, but he was a little nervous. Jacob remembered how he had tricked Esau into selling him his birthright, and how he tricked their father into giving him the special blessing. He believed that Esau was still very angry with him. Jacob turned to God for help. Jacob remembered God's past promises to be with him, and he reminded God of those promises. As he traveled, two hosts of heavenly angels one before and one behind, traveled with him and his family. Jacob sent messengers to take greetings to Esau. He told them to address Esau as my lord so that Esau would know that he was not coming back to claim any inheritance or position. But the messengers returned with the news that Esau was approaching with 400 men. Jacob began to wonder if Esau was coming to destroy him. Jacob began to pray and reminded God of his promises. Then Jacob sent word to Esau that he was coming home. He also sent many animals as gifts. Jacob really needed Esau's forgiveness. That night, Jacob sent his family and all his possessions across the Jabbok stream. But he stayed behind by himself, and there he wrestled with an angel and received a blessing. Meanwhile, Another angel had appeared to Esau in a dream about Jacob. The next day, when Jacob saw Esau coming with his 400 men, he divided his family, putting the children with their mothers. Then he went to the front of the group. While he was still a long way from Esau, Jacob bowed low to the ground, then he walked on toward his brother and bowed again. Jacob did this seven times. This was a sign of humility. But when Esau met Jacob, he ran to him and threw his arms around him. He hugged and kissed his brother and they both began to cry. Jacob must have felt such a relief. Jacob introduced his family to Esau. Esau wanted to return the gifts because he had more than enough of his own. But Jacob ins insisted. He told Esau that acceptance of the gifts would show him that he was truly forgiven. Well, Esau finally accepted the gifts and offered to travel the rest of the journey with Jacob. But Jacob told him to go ahead of them as he has to travel much slower because of the children and animals. Esau even offered to leave some of his soldiers with Jacob. But Jacob assured him that he and his family are safe because God has protected them. Finally, Esau was persuaded to go on ahead. 
Jacob, with his large family and flocks, followed slowly toward his father's land. There in Shechem, in the land of Canaan, Jacob purchased land and made his home. Jacob was considerate of his family, even though he was anxious to reach Canaan. He put the needs of others first. When we truly serve others, we will be considerate of their needs too. Jacob knew that everything he had, he had came from God. He would be generous because God had blessed him. In the same way, because of all that Jesus has given us, we can generously share what we have without expecting anything in return. Now, let's listen to a special song by Alyssa Miller. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. He is higher than a skyscraper and He's deeper than a submarine. He is wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And He has loved me and He's loved me since before the world began. How than a submarine. He is wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he has known me and he has loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands, 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 and He holds us in His hands. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed it. So goodbye from Ephesus Kids Corner. Until next time, see you next week. Bye.